Hey, I wanted to hop on here and do just a quick um, encouragement, tell a little story. Um, we are between Denver and Fort Collins, Colorado. We just got off the airplane and I had to stop and get my nails filled in. And so I'm going to meet the baby and Dave over at Panera. They were doing some Christmas shopping, but the Lord just put it on my heart to get on and encourage you if you have had some detours if you have had some things that you don't understand going on even things that are frustrating even people that are incompetent around you slowing things down um god's ways are not our ways and we have got to remember hey olivia and houston crystal you guys let me know where you're hopping on from it's just going to be a quick story, uh, a little bit of encouragement. Hey, Jamie, Atticus, Keisha. I mean, you know, people in traffic driving like they're crazy. People in line on the, you know, or at the counter where you're checking out, not paying attention, talking on the cell phone. There's rude people. There's incompetent people, workers that you're having to deal with, all the stuff, you know, these little things that happen in life, and you might have some big things too, but no matter all these little things that are happening, we have got to believe that there isn't just a bunch of random things going on, that God is able to work out even those little annoyances. <laughs> so I'm going to tell this story. Just wait for a few minutes to hop on here. Hey, Nikki, Neva, Arkansas, Atlanta, somebody's got some snow Crystal in East Tennessee, Richmond. Okay, Lord. So we are running late for the airport. The flight was at 7 a.m. this morning. And we should have left at 5, but we left at about 5.20. So we let, had an hour from the time we pulled into the airport, the Reagan Airport in D.C., which is huge. And so I'm not used to driving to that airport. Usually we fly out in, of Dulles, closer to our house. So I'm asking Dave on the way there to look up what parking lot to park that's closest and where our airline is. And so we were hustling in, walking really fast. We are, you know, you have to check in 45 minutes before your flight. So we barely got there, 45 minutes. There was nobody in line, thank goodness, because everybody was already on the plane. It was an early flight. So here it is, 6.15, we're checking in. And we leave the checkout counter. She handed me two tickets put in our luggage. Um, we're about to go through the line to have our bodies checked out and our bags, you know, that are, we're, our carry-ons checked out. And the lady's looking at the tickets and she's like, this is, both of these tickets have his name on it. And I was like, what? She's like, none of these have your name or the baby's name. And so we're like, oh, so we're running back to the ticket booth. Well, the lady is leaving the ticket booth. We're on a really we're a frontier airlines <laughs> really cheap she's leaving the ticket booth because it's there's no other flights apparently and she's leaving because you leave she, they don't check anybody in after 45 minutes before the flight and I'm like you didn't give me my ticket and so she comes back and she's giving me my ticket and and so we're going through the thing and I'm having to go Lord help me why, you know, help us to get there on time, no, number one. Help them not to close the door on us. And then, I mean, it wasn't like I was majorly fuming at the lady or anything. Just a minor irritant. But I'm like, oh, that's, that was so incompetent. How could she not give both of our tickets? Like, what kind of ticket checkout lady doesn't give you your ticket when you, you're you standing there getting it? Knowing that the flight's fixing to take off. So I'm like, I'm talking out loud. And I'm saying, Lord, help me give her grace. No, 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 no. You know, you just... Have <laughs> some of those things that happen, and um, so I, you know, I let it go before we got through the line, and we are through the line, and I mean, God just arranged. We hear our name being called over the intercom because we're fixing to shut the door. We get barely squeak on that plane, but when we were in line, when we came back after the ticket to get my ticket, some young guy comes in behind us and she's like we're closed we don't do it past and he's saying you just did it for them and you know that's all I heard and she's saying no 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 it's too late and she's not going to check this guy in I don't think anything really about that past that well as we're getting on we see him coming down running down the thing behind us and I'm like she let you in and then I, I realized 
you know, some of the things that we go through, you're asking the Lord, what is going on? You know, how could you put me in this incompetent person? Da, 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 da. You know, this detour, I got, in a, I got in an accident. Somebody hit me in the parking lot Friday and all these different things that happen. And I realized, and I think it was just the Lord did that so that that man could get on the plane because he would not have gotten on the plane because she was walking down the hallway, leaving the post where there was nobody there because the line was closed. And she had to come back to give me my ticket, which I guess the guy talked her into it. Like, look, lady, you're here. <laughs> you know? And so he got on the plane and I said to him, God was looking out for you because I was wondering why she missed the ticket, you know, and God was looking out for you. And, you know, I could tell by the look on his face, this was not somebody who thought about God looking out for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it wasn't like, oh yes, that was God. He heard my prayer kind of look. It was like, you know, it was something that he needed to hear though, that God had him on his mind to get him on that flight. And, you know, I said something about it two or three times as we're walking down into the plane. And, and so, you know, as, as I'm thinking about this, you know, I am feeling like I got to get on here and remind us, remind myself, remind you guys, it's not all about us. It's not all about us. God's got other people. You know, I mean, we know this. I know this. But when you're irritated and you're just thinking, what an incompetent person. Bailey, we're already stressed, hardly getting there. You know, we got to understand we don't see everything that God sees. And God's not just trying to meet our needs. He's trying to get love and, and meet everybody's needs. He loves us all. And so sometimes as believers, this is why we got to remember our lives are not our own. And so really frustration and, and impatience, it's the fruit of pride. It's, it's the fruit of pride saying, this is my life. This is my time. It's got to go my way. You know, these people aren't doing things the way I like them to do. And it's pride. And we got to remember, and this just reminded me of that, God is in control and he's working all things for good. I remember, I'm saying I got an offender bender in the parking lot. And it reminded me of when I was pregnant with Abigail Rose. Before I knew I was pregnant, I had just bought this car and pulled out of the parking lot. And on the way home, two miles from the parking lot, I got in a, a four-car pileup. I was the second or third third, I was the third car. I was the third car in a four, four car pileup and my bumper's all messed up. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and you know, what came out of that is they cut me a check. I went to Mako and my friend ordered me a used bumper who worked at Mako. I ended up having $2,000 left over from that. And that actually helped finance us going to Europe to meet Forrest for Christmas last year. I would go through a fender bender again for $2,000 plus my car being fixed. God is in control. But I honestly feel you might not understand and you might miss it. And ask the Lord, you know, I might not understand what's going on right now. But if there's any way you can show me how this is blessing or how it's working out, do it. But don't, don't refuse to praise God and believe that he's good and that he is working good for you and for other people. We've got to allow ourselves to be inconvenienced to bless other people, y'all. This is, uh, I just posted the word from December. If you didn't read it, it went up on Elijah's list today. That was a great honor um, for December. And it's, and it's about this very thing. If you want your year to go different next year, this is the month to press in. Read that prophetic word and don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer also. God wants to use you to bless other people and he's always going to be meeting our needs. He's, I mean, if you think about it, if he's going to convenience us, if he's going to have us work hard and, and, and sow into other people's lives and he's going to convenience our inconvenience our time or get us to give this away or give that away, if he's going to do that for other people, especially that don't even care a thing about him, how much more is he working behind the scenes to try to meet our needs? Do you see? And so it's really a beautiful thing. And I got to go um, meet my husband and baby at Panera because I got to get him into work because <laughs> we're 
on the way to Fort Collins. Um, if you guys haven't seen my commercial, I posted it. Go to my page. It's a, it's just kind of a campy <laughs> commercial for the vlog that I'm going to be doing that I did, and I'm going to release it Thursday night at 8, p 8 p.m. I'll be on the plane coming back then, but I think I can set it to be released at that time on YouTube. <clears throat> And it's fun, even though it's not as good as it could have been because I lost like 70% of the video footage from Dubai. I made do, and so the next one will be better. I'm learning iMovie, and it's fun, and I believe it'll bless you guys, so keep an eye out for that. And I'm also going to be getting on the next opportunity that I have because I want to talk about family curses and ancestral curses. I want to pray over you guys. I pray the Lord between now and then um, stir you up to um, really start thinking about some patterns that prayer and fasting and obedience hasn't seemed to break off your life, that there is a possibility that you're still operating under a curse that really just came down on you from your ancestors. And so I'm going to pray, pray over people to break those curses because we are blessed and not cursed. I love you guys. Share this. If it blessed you, it'll bless other people. Share this and invite people to watch it. And, and I'll talk to you soon.